Okay. All right, so we're going to be doing the uh, modified Morgan pocket technique for um, the uh, replacement of a prolapsed uh, gland of the third eyelid. Um, important to replace the gland rather than uh, cut it out uh, because the gland uh, produces significant number of tears, at least 30% in most dogs, um, and in some dogs up to 70% of the tear production. So definitely don't want to cut this thing out. Um, so uh, the dog's laying in uh, ventral recumbency. Um, we've got the head just propped up um, on the, some towels uh, to make it nice and level. Um, we, you don't need to shave any of the um, hair or eyelashes around the eyes unless um, it's a really long haired dog and you think they'll get in your way. Um, and then you want to only prep with betadine both around the eye and then um, put some betadine on some uh, Q-tips and um, rub down in the conjunctival fornixes and on the um, gland itself. Um, it's not going to be a sterile procedure, but you want it to be as clean as possible. Um, you want to start by putting some stay sutures in. Um, that's uh, going to maximize your visibility um, and make your life a lot easier. Um, and then, of course, uh, the eyelid retractors to uh, keep everything out of your way. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing that we're going to do is um, you know, take a uh, just a 15 blade or a, even a small beaver blade if you have it, um, and you want to make a um, incision right along the base of the um, gland here. It's not going to. It's going to be a very superficial um, incision. Um, if you can uh, not go deep enough to be incising all of the blood vessels around there, that's really helpful for blood flow to the third, uh, the gland. Um, but some of them uh, will get cut and there will be a little bit of bleeding. Um, but you're basically just trying to, um, as the technique says, uh, just create this pocket. Um, so I make this incision just kind of right at the base here with just really light pressure and you can start to see the tissue separate a little bit. So you can see real well there, we're starting to get kind of a little, a little separation and a little pocket. Just have really light pressure here. <clears throat> so then you can take your tenotomy scissors and try to create a little depth to this pocket. Um, doesn't have to be real dramatic, but just enough to give you something to sew to. Yeah, so that's good. All right, <clears throat> now before I make my incision on the um, bulbar side, um, I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot. I'm using 5-0 monomend. Um, you will see um, it described for people to use um, a braided suture as well. Um, I prefer monofilament for knot security. Um, and we're using 5-0, so teeny tiny. You want to tie your knots on the um, palpebral side of the um, gland so your knots don't rub. Um, a common uh, complication of this procedure um, is if the knots are tied on the bulbar side and you get ulceration from them rubbing. So you want to avoid that. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so now after I make this next incision, um, that's going to be ready to pass through to the other side. We can start sewing. Um, the reason why you want to be all ready to go before you make this incision is that as you make this incision, um, the edge of the uh, conjunctiva that you want to sew to is going to have the propensity to dive down um, towards the cornea. Um, and it may get to a point where it's not easy to see and you could actually not be sewing the proper things together and it'll certainly fail if that happens. So um, you want to make that incision and be pretty ready to start sewing so you don't lose the edge. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to make this incision 
um, just kind of where, if this thing were sitting straight up and down, kind of where the back side of it would be. And so, or at the bottom, I should say, right about there. And again, you can see just pretty light pressure, just trying to separate the, that superficial layer, the conjunctiva. You notice that vessel underneath is still intact. Again, you can use your tenotomy scissors to try to open it up a little bit. Again, it doesn't have to be dramatic, just big enough to get yourself an edge to sew to, to create that pocket. So now you can see we've we've started to get a little pocket here. Okay, so we're gonna sew this edge to this leading edge over here. Now, one thing that um, I think helps in uh, failure rates is to scarify the gland um, with your 15 blade. So just kind of rough it up a little bit. And um, I think that helps create a little bit of scar tissue which helps hold it in place. <clears throat> All right, so now we're ready to pass our knot through to the bulbar side, obviously always taking care not to jam the needle into the cornea. Um, it's going to happen. You're going to get um, corneal abrasion sometimes, um, but you want to try to decrease that possibility as much as possible. All right, so we're gonna <clears throat> take a bite out of this edge. And then we're gonna come to the leading edge of this incision over here. And you wanna take care on this leading edge um, to make your bite fairly superficial. Um, Functionally, it won't matter um, if you go too deep. Cosmetically, you'll get some wrinkling of the um, leading edge of the third eyelid there. And we can see it even with this first bite, you can see it push down into the pocket like that. It's gonna take quite a few more bites before it stays, but you can kind of get the concept of what we're doing. So now that your gland is in place, <clears throat> you're going to pass your suture through back to the palpebral side. So again, you can tie your knot on the palpebral side and that way you're not rubbing on the cornea.
It's important to note that the gland is still swollen. Um, and to the owner, if the owner's not real perceptive, it's still going to look pretty similar to it did before surgery. So setting the proper expectations of, look, this thing's still swollen, it's just now in the proper position, is really important. And uh, within generally two weeks of the procedure, um, all the swelling goes down, everything looks totally normal. <clears throat> Always won't uh, warn owners that um, failure is possible. Um, failure rates are uh, reported pretty high, um, anywhere from 20 to 50%. And so you got to warn them that failure rate is possible, but um, it can be redone if needed. So there we go. Now the gland's back in the normal place, and once the swelling goes down, it'll be good as new, and uh, we will have saved uh, the dog's tear production.